The year is now 1789, and Antoine Lavoisier put forward the law of conservation of matter. He carefully measured the mass of reactants before a reaction occurred, and of products after a reaction occurred in a closed container and observed no change in mass. He proved that mass remains constant during a chemical reaction. Any and all chemical reactions can demonstrate the law of conservation of mass, but let's look at this one. Calcium carbonate can decompose when it's heated and it forms carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. If we start with 10.0 grams of calcium carbonate and it fully decomposes, we end up with 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide and 5.6 grams of calcium oxide. 4.4 grams plus 5.6 grams equals 10.0 grams. The mass did not change. The total mass of matter never changes during any chemical reaction. Let's pause to check your intuition. If you boil a pot of water and keep boiling it until all of that water has turned into steam and the kettle is empty, has the mass of that water changed? A lot of people find the answer to this question to be confusing. No, the mass of the water has not changed but the density of a gas is so much lower than that of a liquid that a lot of people assume that the mass has to somehow be lower when the liquid changes into a gas. It's not. The water vapor is dispersed through the air, but it's all still there. And in Lavoisier's experiment, we're talking about calcium carbonate, which is the main component of chalk, limestone, and marble. So think of a rock and when you heat it, 44% of its mass is converted to carbon dioxide gas, and it just dissipates, but the mass is still all there. Lavoisier is saying that if you collect this gas, you can prove that the total mass of matter never changes during any chemical reaction. And that was groundbreaking. If you go on to learn to balance chemical equations, it's based on the law of conservation of matter. So what does this mean for the structure of an atom? It means that matter is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. Whatever the structure of the atom is, it has to be consistent with this law. If you want a moment to propose your own atomic structure based on this new information, pause because I'm about to show you some of mine. First is what I'm going to call the unbreakable core model inspired by Lavoisier and Democritus of ancient Greece. Maybe matter is made of tiny indivisible particles. Let's call them atoms after Democritus's idea. These atoms cannot be created or destroyed, only rearranged. Each type of substance has its own unique atom differing in shape and size, which explains the diversity of materials in the universe. Atoms might be miniature stones, eternal and solid, unchanging, moving around, but never transforming into something else. Or second, the elemental sphere model inspired by Aristotle and alchemy. Maybe atoms are not indivisible, but contain four elemental essences, earth, air, fire, and water. They're blended in different proportions. When substances react, their atoms simply exchange or rearrange these essences, but the total amount of each element remains constant, preserving the law of conservation of matter. This could explain why a chemical reaction like burning wood doesn't destroy matter. It just releases its fire and air components while leaving behind earth in the form of wood ash. We've got a long way to go to figure out the structure of the atom. The total mass of matter stays the same during any chemical reaction, but the number of likes on this video could use your help, so click that like button. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell.